Hey there, it's been a while since we last saw each other. Well, that's unsurprising being as the master hasn't been feeling very well. Really, I can't say that I've noticed anything out of the ordinary. You must be fucking blind then, or just fucking stupid. Take a look. Brains need brains. Oh shit. Is there nothing we can do to make him feel better? Well, it's been a while since anything decent came along. Why don't you try offering him something and see if that does the trick? Okay, let's give it a try. Master, I have this humble offering for you. More brains. Hi there, my name is Riley J. Dennis. Said <laughs> want brains, not shit. Hungry. One of you must let me eat your brains. Well, that didn't go according to plan. And I prefer my brains to stay unmunched. Thank you. What the fuck can we do now? Hold my pint and watch how a pro handles shizzle. Boy Pika, get your chompers round this. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Teddy. Welcome, Welcome to, to Queer, Queer Kid Stuff. Stuff. Today we're talking about privilege and something called intersectionality. Wow. Delicious, fresh, tangy brains. And that, bitches, is why I'm his favorite. Ah, oh, that's better. Hello, slimy furtlers, and I'm back again today to uh, have a look at uh, Queer Kid Stuff. And uh, this has been, well, Queer Kid Stuff's been around for a long while. Um, everybody and his granddad's had a fucking crack at Lindsay and Teddy. Um, but today it's my turn, and uh, I'm going to have a, a look at their video, which is about, apparently, about privilege and intersectionality. So uh, let's get on with it, and, uh, you know. Let's see what goes off. That's a big word, Lindsay. It's a big topic, too, but I think we're ready for it. Queer kid stuff. You are enough here at Queer Kid Stuff. Welcome to the final episode in our series on privilege. Yeah, incidentally, this, uh, this particular episode I'm looking at here is the final episode of series two of Queer Kid Stuff. Um, so that means Lindsay and Teddy have made it through two whole series so far uh, of whatever it is that Lindsay appears to be doing. Now, while it's uh, admirable that Lindsay is, is trying to, you know, trying to explain difficult adult concepts to children in a, a way that they understand it, uh, the main problem I've had with queer kids stuff is that rather than just simply explaining the concepts of things to people she's been actively promoting stuff as well to to children and the problem with that is that uh, at the age that this series is aimed at you know basically it's aimed at sort of uh, preschool and, and, and very young children you know sort of up to the age of kind of eight children just simply won't understand that uh, a lot of the stuff that she's talking about you know they at that age you you don't think about sex and sexuality and things like that you know at that age all you're bothered about is you know playing out and you know playing with your action figures or your xbox or whatever you know while it does serve a, a purpose to sort of ready ready children for these kind of things and answer any questions they have about you know why is that man wearing a dress to actively state to kids that you know this is you know this is something that you should be doing kind of thing is uh, it's this borderline what they call it but it's like I say it is admirable that she's at least trying to um, explain things even if you know throughout both series she has dropped a few fucking corkers along the way you ready Teddy? Phew. yeah I think I'm ready okay hail Satan what the fuck so today we're focusing on intersectionality can you say that with me slowly? Intersectionality. Nothing like a good old group chant to get you uh, into the right level of religious fervor. What does it mean, Lindsay? Intersectionality has to do with everything we've talked about with privilege. Intersectionality is the regressive equivalent of the phrase correlation does not always equal causation, except they conveniently forget the does not part, in order to make out that no matter what your circumstances, if you aren't white and heterosexual, you're a victim of systematic oppression. Do you remember everything we've learned? Oh yeah! We learned about races, and classes, and uh, ability stuff, and emotions, and, and, and we met so many new friends! Teddy. I'm so proud of you. Why? 
Because like the obedient, unthinking little drone that you are, you've accepted everything that Lindsay's told you without question or scepticism. Well, the stuff we're talking about can be really tough to understand, even for grown-ups. Yeah, those pesky grown-ups that happen to, you know, question what you say and look into uh, the subjects that you're talking about to see whether they have any merit or not. You know, Teddy, you're pretty awesome. Thanks for being my friend. Lindsay! I will throw you into the lake of fire and consume your soul. So, intersectionality. This is the big one. So, we've talked about all these different parts of people's identities, right? Yes, indeed, Lindsay, you made quite a few points, and the vast majority of which were either partially or wholly completely incorrect. Um, because what you tend to do here, and what intersectionality does in general, is to conflate certain things that people basically have no control over, and uh, mark them down as being points for oppression. If somebody would care to explain to me how being black and gay makes you a better tarmac layer, um, I'd be willing to, uh, you know, I'd be willing to listen. But unfortunately, nobody seems to mention that when it comes to intersectionality. You see, the problem is the world based on merit, and merit really doesn't care what you are or you know where you come from. It cares how good you are at doing something, and uh, always will do. We learned about all these different parts of our identities separately, but everyone has all of these different parts of their identity all at once. Yes, this is a concept known as individuality, um, in which the various aspects of a person's identity come together to make them greater, uh, you know, the whole greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, this is a very difficult concept for regressives to understand because for some reason they really, really, really like to unpack, as they call it, uh, various aspects to people uh, in order to assess, you know, how many points they were scored on the progressive stack. Um, unfortunately, though, when you bring all the parts together to create a, you know, a complete and whole person, um, any, you know, merit that uh, the discussion of their individual aspects, uh, you know, had is rendered moot because everything altogether is what matters. And, uh, you know, the individual has different tastes, different likes. You know, they are, everyone is a, a different person from, you know, everyone else. There, there's only ever one of you and one of the person stood next to you. There are never any people who are identical and, and exactly the same. I mean, regressives would very much love for everyone to be all the same. Then they'd have this equitable utopia that they're so uh, interested in. Unfortunately, the human condition doesn't allow for that. Everyone is different uh, as much as everyone is the same. You know, we all have the same uh, basic chemical, biochemical structure. We all have the same basic uh, DNA structure and, you know, the variations within that you know, lead to male and female. And there are only biological males or females, you know. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you believe you're a dolphin kin or something like that. That doesn't actually make it true. Um, if you want to dispute that, go and ask your doctor if they would mind treating a dolphin and, uh, you know, they'll send you to a vet because doctors are qualified to work on animals. Uh, but yeah, the uh, what Lindsay is trying to get at here is that basically you take all the things that you can score oppression points have, pile them up into one thing, and then that gives you like a master overall score which you can then beat other people over the head with until they acquiesce to your demands and give you what you want. At which point, when you get given what you want, you're no longer oppressed, so therefore you have to keep inventing more and more and more oppressions until you, you know, basically run out of things to do. And as we've seen with, you know, the regressive side, they begin arguing amongst themselves, you know, who's who's better than who and who's more oppressed than who and all that stuff. So uh, it's quite nice to sit and watch regressives uh, implode when they start arguing amongst themselves like this. And it's, it's something that inevitably happens because they can't see the individual, they can only see a collective group of people who all have oppression points. You can't really look at them separately. Everyone has their very own gender, race, class, ability status, mental health, and other parts of their identity all at once. And that's where intersectionality fails, because like I said, you lump all the things together to create an individual, and then immediately try to uh, collectivize them based on 
how much oppression points they happen to have accumulated over their life. Rather than taking them on their own individual merits and strengths, you decide to take them on their oppressions and weaknesses instead. And unfortunately, that doesn't work. Never will. Whoa. Intersectionality is about looking at all of the different parts of your identity all at once. And looking at where you might or might not have privilege in all of those identities. In other words, you take the whole, divide it back up into its parts, then ignore the good and instead focus on the bad. This is not in any way a good thing, as it encourages people to dwell on their inadequacies and weaknesses, and actively discourages them from personal growth and striving to overcome obstacles in their life, thus ensuring generation after generation of people who will progressively become more and more useless to the human race because they are too neurotic to actually serve any kind of useful function. Totally right, Lindsay. Yes, the weak will perish. They will flood to me in droves and I will kill them all. I will consume their souls. I will destroy everything. Yes, hail Satan. Hail Satan. It's really important to remember that everyone has all these different parts of their identities at once because everyone experiences those identities differently. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Correct, Lindsay. This is called individuality. Individuality does not equal oppression, unless you allow it to, nor does your individuality equal privilege. Granted, there are some things such as skin color, race, parental circumstances etc etc that you have no direct control over, but in later life you can work toward overcoming these things. You don't bother mentioning that though, because this fact wouldn't fit in with your narrative about being oppressed all the time by a mysterious intangible force that despite assertions of its existence, never actually manages to materialize into any kind of tangible and impassable form. Also, take that fucking smug shit eating grin off your face, because anyone who comes out with the horse shit that you spew has no reason to look as smug as that. So Let's take me, for example, and two parts of my identity, my race and my sexuality. I'm white and queer. But can you lay tarmac, though? This is the thing. I'm looking for somebody to tarmac my drive. I don't give two fucks whether they're white or gay or queer or whatever you say you are. All I'm bothered about is, can you lay tarmac? If you can't lay tarmac, fuck off. I have an advantage because I'm white, but I have a disadvantage because I'm queer. Yeah, that makes sense. Now Yes, it makes sense in the fact that you're making everyone neurotic before they've even reached puberty. Yes, a generation of people who are so insecure about themselves that they will quite happily listen to anything that they're told. <laughs> That's the last thing we had to talk about this season, Teddy. Season 2 is over already? But, 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 I have so many questions still. We'll have plenty of time to answer them next season. Thanks so much for joining me and Teddy for season two of Queer Kid Stuff. So yes, tune in for series three when we will really, really fuck your brains up. <laughs> Is that Teddy schizophrenic or something? No, sounds perfectly normal to me. A well-adjusted individual. Uh, but yes, that brings us to the end of this little episode, and, uh, you know, it was only the last episode of, of Queer Kid Stuff Series 2, so there wasn't much by way of talking points in there, really. Um, I have snipped out some of the bits where Lindsay waffles on a while, but as usual, I'll put a link to the full thing down the bottom there. And uh, as you can see from on the screen, my social contact information is up uh, for Twitter and Vidme, and also my PayPal link if you're feeling generous and want to donate a little bit of something. Um, which at the moment is going on living expenses, uh, so any and all donations are received with thanks and will be put to good use. But uh, yeah, so um, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. <laughs>